great seeing you here again. My name is Luke de Custer, founder of the Custer Academy. And in this video, I will talk about the principles of Agile, Scrum, and Kanban. But before we continue, don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button, and every time there is a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. So let's start. And first thing to do is to look at the difference between waterfall and agile. Typically, predictive environments, what we call waterfall, where we define everything at the beginning, changes are progressively managed and in some cases even almost made impossible. All scope management has been done at the beginning and verification and control at the end and a strict change management policy. Now, when we look at an adaptive environment, we have a high level of change. We decompose the scope in a product backlog and at each iteration, the requirements are collected. The scope is defined and a WBS is created. We have continuous engagement of the stakeholders and continuous and flexible changes. Now, when we look at the value delivery between waterfall and agile, let's first have a look at an adaptive process. We have every time a small amount of risk that we take. So we are in step one. We see that the risk is there with the work that we are doing. And every time it's the only that small portion of risk that we have. And when we look at the evolution of risk towards the end of the project, the risk is decreasing because we managed it step by step. When we have a waterfall approach, a predictive approach, we assemble everything at the end. And it's only at the end that we will see if something is working or not. And that's a big disadvantage of a predictive process or waterfall process. And it also gives you the advantages of the adaptive processes and the agile methods that have been defined. Now, when we look at the triple constraint in waterfall and agile, waterfall is a plan-driven approach. We have uh, constraints, which are the scope, and we estimate the time and the cost. When we look at agile, it's a value-driven approach. We have the constraints, which are time and money, cost, and the estimate is about the scope that we are going to do. Now, that's one of the important elements that we have when we're comparing the triple constraint between waterfall and agile. Now, when we look at agile, we also have to understand the agile principles. Before we had agile, people were already trying to find different ways to create more adaptive project management methods. And in 2001, the people who have been developing the Agile software met to create what we call today the Agile Manifesto. The Manifesto has 12 principles and they're based on the core values of the Agile method. First core value is the individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Working software over comprehensive documentation. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation and responding to change over following a plan. We don't create a plan like we did before, but we do it in iterations. Now, when we look at the Agile Manifesto, there are 12 principles. The first six are on this slide. So we have satisfy the customer, one of the main principles. Welcome changing requirements. We are adaptive, we are flexible. Deliver working software frequently. We always have a solution that is working. Work together. Everybody is cooperating. It's not isolated. We can, in the business people, can intervene very quickly to adapt or to implement changes. Build projects around motivated individuals. Motivation is very important because we have self-leading teams. Face-to-face -face conversation is the best way to deal with it. We can look at different elements. We can look at the face-to-face uh, -face communication in co-location. That's one of the best things that we can have when we're dealing with this type of projects. Now, we also have the Agile Manifesto, the remaining six um, principles. Focus on the working software. Uh, we always want to have something that is working. We promote sustainable development. We ensure technical excellence. Simplicity is essential. It refers to the maxim to maximizing the work not done. We only create value. We don't do work that is not necessary. Self-organizing teams. 
and finally reflect and adjust. So these are the elements that we have that are the elements, the 12 principles in the Agile Manifesto. Now, when we look at the Scrum Cycle, the Scrum Cycle, we already mentioned it before, we have the product backlog. These are the elements that we think we will have to create to create the project, to have the project. At the beginning of every sprint, we put the elements that we are going to complete in the sprint in what we call the sprint backlog. That's the work we are going planning. We will be planning to the sp through the sprint. And we have sprint iterations, which are typically two to four weeks. Now we have daily stand-ups. Uh, we have a daily stand-up. We look at what is happening, how are we dealing with it. And finally, we have a product increment and we have a sprint review and retrospectives. Now, when we look at the tools and artifacts in Scrum, first of all, we have the Scrum board, a very interesting board where we see all the index cards where we see the status of the project. We have the user stories, the user stories which describe the work that has to be completed. We have the burn down chart which shows the way the project is going. Uh, we see how many stories, did, how many points did we complete going through the project. Then we have time boxing, that's the timing that we are using, uh, the time that the team can work on the tasks. And icebox is where we put the stories that we didn't use. Now, when we look at the core practices and principles of Kanban, uh, in Kanban, it's a little bit different. We have a constant flow. So here we have to visualize the workflow. We are having a flow system, not where there is no sprint system. We have to limit the work in progress, so we limit for every step the work so that no activities were, are waiting for people to work on them. We limit it, the work, the activities are limited to the number of people that can be working in that moment. We, have, we are managing the flow, so the flow through the Kanban is very important, and we have to see how the flow is going to manage that flow, to improve it. We have process policies that we have to set up. And finally, we have to improve continuously. That's also what means Kaizen, continuous improvement. We want to do it better and better and better. When we look at burn down charts, there are different scenarios. We have the ideal situation where we have the, that every sprint is doing the work approximately like we planned. We're perfect. We have uh, different reasons for that. You can find them in the previous course. We have a drop at the end. Uh, we have a drop at the beginning, which means typically that we were, let's say, pessimistic. It goes up. It means that we've been adding more elements. Uh, we are not finishing the work like we planned it. We are adding more things and then almost finished. We are almost at the end, but we didn't get there. So the project uh, is not completed. We still are missing some elements. So these are different scenarios that you can encounter. Now, when we're looking at Scrum, we want to understand what will be the expected duration. And let's assume that we have a total effort of 200 points. We have an estimated velocity of 20 points per iteration and a duration of the sprint is three weeks. So we can say, okay, our number of sprints is the total effort divided by the velocity. So we have 200 divided by 20 which gives us 10 iterations. We have three weeks per sprint, so we have in total 30 weeks. Now, we can also work in a different way. Once we are working on the project, we can also uh, calculate the velocity and we can say how many sprints do we still have to do. This is the remaining of effort divided by the calculated velocity and we find the additional iterations that we still have to complete. Here we have a different way how we can make an estimate. There are different ways to calculate. We can calculate the velocity based on the three last sprints, for example. In this case, I looked at an optimistic, a probable, and a pessimistic approach. The optimistic is um, more, of course, uh, we have more uh, higher velocity. The pessimistic, in this case, is the lower velocity. And we can also calculate the expected duration of the project. We calculated here with the three points. So it's a simple 
calculation. We have the standard deviation, eh, in this case 20 minus 14 divided by 5, which gives us 12 points. And then we look at the effort and we want to have like around 80% uh, certainty. So we have to look at the three point velocity plus one standard deviation, which gives us about 17.14 sprints. And we round up, so we cannot have 17.14 sprints. So we estimate now at 18 sprints. Now, when we look at the different sprints, uh, we have uh, velocities of previous sprints. We have four sprints. The total points for the project are 300. So what we already did, we already created a number of the points. So part of the work is done, which is 14 plus 17 plus 22 plus 25. Now we want to know what is the remaining uh, time for completing this project. Now let's have a look. We have the average velocity. In our case, we have 19.5 points. And we take the new estimate, which have n is the velocity of the previous sprints. So we have four sprints, or sorry, the number of sprints that we already did before. We did four sprints. The remaining effort is the 200 minus the points of the four previous sprints divided by the average velocity, which gives us approximately, which gives us 15.38 sprints. And of course, we go up. So the total duration of the project will be 16 sprints which means we still have to complete four sprints. So that was a quick overview of Agile project management. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button, and every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. Thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in our next videos. Bye-bye.